Hey everybody, Mike here with Delta Faucet. If you're planning a bathroom renovation or even doing new construction, a new bathtub and wall set can make all the difference and it's a project that we can help you tackle. Now, keep in mind that building codes are different everywhere. Also, if there's a task that seems a little bit beyond your abilities, we definitely recommend contacting a professional for some additional help. You can also make sure you're totally comfortable with all these steps by reviewing this video before fully diving in. Now, it's also good to know that this is really a two-person job because there are certainly some steps along the way that require an extra set of hands. Now, before we get started, we want to make sure that you're watching the right video. Let's confirm a few things. First, take a look at your installation guide or packaging to confirm what series you've selected. In this video, we'll cover a bathtub in Delta's EverEdge series. Today, we're installing a 60 by 32 inch bathtub, but this video will also work with any of Delta's EverEdge 60 by 32 bathtubs, regardless of drain position. Finally, if you are pairing a matching wall set with your tub, make sure those components are also part of the Delta EverEdge series. If all those things check out, then you're watching the right video. Now, before starting any plumbing related project, it's always a good idea to go ahead and shut off the water supply, so be sure to do that before you begin the installation. Next, let's collect the tools and supplies we may need to complete this installation. Those include a caulk gun, a tape measure, a pencil, a utility knife, some safety glasses, a level, a bit holder extension, mortar, some shims, a drop cloth, a drill, adhesive, sealant, a driver bit, a 3 16 inch drill bit, a carpenter square, inch and a quarter stainless or zinc plated truss head screws, a half inch square notch trowel, and some gloves. Now you're also going to need a bathtub drain assembly. Now it's not included with this model, so be sure to get a standard bathtub drain with a 13 and 3 quarter inch height. Now a little pro tip here, you may want to make sure that the drain finish coordinates with your trim finish. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's get started. The first step is to check that our walls are plumb and square and that our subfloor is level. Now is also the time to check any framing requirements for the wall set or surround that you're going to be installing. So grab your long level. We're gonna place it against each of the studs in our opening to make sure that we're plumb. And you wanna make sure that the bubble is in between the lines. So once you ensure that each one of your studs is plumb, we're gonna come down to the subfloor and check that we're level. Place your level on the floor at the back, the front, and both sides. We also ensure that the walls in our opening are square to one another. So to do this, I'm gonna use my carpenter square. I'm gonna start in one of my back corners here, holding the square tight along each bottom plate, checking to make sure I'm getting good, consistent contact along each edge of the square. I also think it's a good idea to go ahead and check a couple feet up as well. Again, just to ensure that all my framing looks nice and square to one another. Now I'm gonna check the other side as well, but I wanna point out that if there's any last minute adjustments you need to make to your framing, now's gonna be our last opportunity to do this. So be sure to get it done because it'll help ensure that the installation runs smoothly from here on out. So once your opening's looking good, we can go ahead and move forward to the next step. All right, we've got our tub dry fit in place and we've made sure it's pushed all the way back into our opening and it's making even contact on all of the studs in our opening. Now we also wanna make sure that our tub is sitting level in our opening. So I'm gonna take my level, placing it along the deck of the tub on the back, both sides to ensure that it's sitting nice and level. Okay, everything's looking good here. If your tub is out of level, you'll need to apply a mortar bed to your subfloor in a later step. Okay, let's move on. All right, so we pulled our tub out and flipped it upside down and have it resting on a blanket to protect the surface. So now we need to attach our apron support to our apron using the included double-sided tape. So I've gone ahead and taken my gloves off for this step and I've evenly spaced my pieces of tape along my apron support. Now I'm gonna place my last piece of tape right on the edge of my support here, apply some pressure, and then I'm gonna peel the backing off. So I've already peeled the backing off of my other pieces of tape. And you want your apron support to sit about a quarter of an inch below the edge of your apron. So I have Mike holding the apron back. So 
so that none of my tape sticks to my apron before I'm ready for it to. All right, once you've got that all set, we're ready to move on. All right, we've got our tub dry fit back in place and I've placed a piece of cardboard down to protect the surface of my tub. Grab a pencil and we're gonna make a mark at each one of the studs in our opening so that we know where to drill our pilot holes. So we're gonna make the mark on the center of our flange, again, at each one of our stud locations. Now we're also gonna drill two pilot holes in each front edge flange here. So we're gonna make a little dot towards the top and then another one down towards the bottom, repeating the same step on the other side. Now finally, before we pull this back out of the opening, I think it's a great idea to go ahead and make a reference line about where the apron is contacting the subfloor. So take your pencil and draw that line all the way side to side. Once you've got all your pilot holes marked and your apron marked, we're gonna pull the tub back out of the opening and then move on to drilling those pilot holes. Now that I have my tub pulled out of my opening, we're gonna move on to drilling those pilot holes. Now to do this, I'm gonna use a 3 16 inch drill bit. I'm also using an extended drill bit holder to give myself a little bit more clearance here because I wanna make sure that the spinning chuck of my drill doesn't damage the finish on my tub anywhere. So, once you're ready to go, just work your way around the tub, drilling each one of those locations you just marked. Now we can move on to cutting the hole in our subfloor to accommodate our tub drain. So the first step we need to do is determine the center line of where that drain needs to be located. To do this, I'm gonna measure off the inside of the tub here, bringing my tape measure across, and finding out what measurement determines the center line of that tub drain. Once I've got that measurement, we're gonna move over to the subfloor and transfer it on there. Moving down to our subfloor, I'm gonna transfer that center line mark, making sure I'm on the correct side that the drain's gonna be located. And coming off the inside wall, mark that dimension of that center line. Great, now that I have that marked, the hole we're gonna cut can be no wider than six inches and no more than 12 inches off of our bottom plate. So to mark those dimensions, I'm going to mark to three inches of each side, that center line I just marked. That'll give us a total of six inches. And then coming off of my bottom plate again, I'm gonna mark 12 inches out. All right, now that I've got those boundaries marked, I can go ahead and cut out that rectangle from my subfloor. After that, I'm gonna move on to installing the drain into my tub according to the drain manufacturer's instructions. And once I've done both those things, we'll be ready to move on to the next step. Okay, now it's time to apply our adhesive. Now, if your subfloor was out of level before, this is where you'll apply a mortar bed to make sure that your tub has a flat level surface. Ours is good, so I can go ahead and apply adhesive. You can use an adhesive, say, for plastics or an advanced polymer sealant. I have a half inch square notch trowel here and I'm gonna apply my adhesive and then spread it out till it's about six inches away from our reference line that we made earlier and the other three sides of our opening. Okay, let's get started. All right, we've got our adhesive down and our tub in place. Now, as you place your tub, there's two things you wanna watch out for. Number one, we wanna make sure that the drain is falling into that hole that we just cut. And secondly, we wanna to try to lower the tub down into place rather than slide it across that adhesive or that mortar bed that we just applied. Okay, now let's secure it in place. Now we're ready to secure our tub to our rough framing. Now the first thing I've done is to add a piece of cardboard to the bottom of my tub here to make sure that I'm protecting the finish and also that if I drop any of these screws, they're not gonna fall down the drain. Now the screws I'm using are gonna be an inch and a quarter long and they're truss or pan head screws. Also on my drill, you'll notice I'm using an extended drill bit holder here. What that's gonna do is to make sure that I'm protecting my tub from the spinning chuck of the drill that it's not gonna come in contact which could cause a little bit of damage as I'm securing these screws. And as you tighten these screws up, we wanna make sure that we're just tightening them enough to be sure that they're snug with the framing behind, that we're not over tightening them. Because if you over tighten the screw, it could cause a little bit of damage to the flange itself. And finally, take a look around your opening to make sure that the flange is contacting the rough frame behind evenly. If you have any spots that have a little bit of a gap of greater than say an eighth of an inch, like I do here, I definitely recommend taking a shim, gently dropping it down between the flange and the rough framing to help close that gap before securing your screw. So, 
Keeping all those things in mind, now let's move around our opening, securing our tub to our rough framing. All right, so I've moved around the rest of my opening here, securing my tub to my rough framing. I scored and snapped off any shims I may have used, and I've also let the adhesive cure fully according to the manufacturer's instructions. Now, if you at home had to use a mortar bed because your floor was a little bit unlevel, we also wanna make sure that we've left ample time for that to cure fully as well. At this point, that about wraps up the installation. However, there is one final step that I wanna make sure I point out. Once your finished walls and your finished floor are in place, you wanna make sure that you add a bead of sealant to the seam between your tub and your finished floor all the way side to side. After that, you'll be good to go. We hope this installation went well for you, and if you're moving on to installing the matching wall set for the system, you can go ahead and check out the video we have for that. As always, if you have any additional questions, you can reach out to the Delta Faucet customer service team. They're more than happy to help.